All right, guys, uh, we're excited. As you can see, we've already had a little bit of a combo, so we're joking and uh, having a good time. And this is same great friend of mine, brother-in-law, uh, an amazing artist, and really somebody that I have been speaking to for a long time about different business ventures, his experiences, and we've been working together. So I couldn't have thought of a better person to really join the Ask Dot ask dom that one-on-one -on -one. so saying how you feeling i'm pretty good i'm pretty good thank you for having me uh no pleasure pleasure so today we're gonna um you know this is a new format for us uh, for me in particular so we're gonna be talking about just what saying uh would want to ask and uh, what question he has with regard to his business ventures all the artistic things you're doing so this is your opportunity really yeah like we've done over the years to ask dom that um, so what are we going to be talking about today? Tell me what's going on, what you well, have going on, and, and let's get it. Well, you know, Dom, so aside from all of the business ventures that I just jump into for uh, financial means, um, I'm really getting behind the, the stay sane business, stay sane as a whole, and always put myself out there as the entrepreneur, independent contractor, X and Y and Z, you know, uh, business partner and whatnot. So what I would like to ask really is, what is my best way with my creativity and my business sense to um, articulate my business and stay sane as like its brand? Um, and, you know, like my brand, it's very... It, I feel like it's very fluid, you know, stay sane is also a conversational piece and it's what I want for the, for the world. I wish everybody would stay sane, you know, yeah. like and what does, what does everybody do to stay sane and stay sane is a, a business question as well for any business, because it's like, once your business is not making money and you're losing money, your business is, you're going crazy. So how does your business <laughs> stay sane? You know, so with the, right the, the, the fluidness of Stay Sane and um, the uh, my creativity behind it, my creativity and business, what is kind of like, I guess, my, uh, I don't know, I want to say like my standard ways of how to articulate like how great my business is or can be or will be to other businesses? No, yeah, yeah, that's a great question because when you have a business, especially from the artistic side, right? Like yeah. when you're providing the intangibles of a business, which isn't, you know, you're providing paper, you're a supplier, right? Like your yeah. coffee merchandiser, you're like, we sell shirts or we sell, those are pretty much easier to find. But when you're providing a service that doesn't have a one-to-one -one correlation, rather it's an intangible service uh, to help people and to help businesses, and it's catered towards your individual business, it's yeah. hard to explain in a generic sense. Yeah. Because it's like, well, what value can you bring to a business? I just got to get in your business first and <laughs> see where you're at. <laughs> and then yeah. I can come up with a yeah. game plan to yeah. see how I can help you. So I definitely understand that. And um, and we can I think we could definitely unpack that. First and foremost, um, Hussein Wakil, that's where the same stay same brand came from. What just so people have context, right? Uh -huh. um, if I have never heard of stay same, if, if a lot of people that may be jumping on and, and listening to this or yeah. watching it, they're like, well, what what do you offer? to uh to a business let's use an example of uh, i have a technology company uh, um where, where let's say we have 20 employees uh that are located all over you're in new york um and we have employees in new york that are, are you offering hey i i can since everybody's virtual i can host retreats right like to, to keep the, the company together i can put events together with your marketing department right yep. and make sure that you guys are presented in the right light yeah what is your specialty that you would say man i really would love to offer this product to more people well i, I believe my specialty product is really answering answering your wish list 
is mm -hmm. what I want my product to be. And I think my product is for the most part. It's answering that wish list with a sense of the coolness, create creativity, aesthetics, uh, awareness, and value. You know, so it's like yeah. these key components that are going to be answered within me answering your wish list. Uh, so that's kind of the service, like um, service of answering the wish list within the execution, uh, the execution of it. So if you were trying to have, like you were saying, if you were trying to have team building exercises, yes, like the whole host, you know, create events for this, um, these team building exercises and whatnot. Uh, whatever the wish list is, this is, this is me, you know, this is, yeah, <laughs> this is the service um, I provide. So let me ask you a question. Uh, you, you mentioned a, a couple key things there: coolness, creativity, awareness, and value. Uh -huh. right? That 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 should be your, your mission statement right there. Where we're, we're providing this to our, to, <laughs> to our, to our client. And, and when I when I think about that, if, if I take out everything else, um, extrapolate uh, uh, just that part: coolness, creativity, awareness, and value. It sounds like you're offering me a branding um ambassador ambassadorship mm. or strategy right because right. i might be you know a, a boring it company i might be a boring law firm i might be a boring stock company but i want to be seen new age cool creative we're socially aware we're bringing you value we're not just mm. asking you for put your money in my pockets right, right. so i may come to stay sane and say hey how can your company you have a pulse on the streets on the cool creative side uh -huh. how, how can we enter that market is right. that along the lines of what what you're envisioning or a hundred percent a hundred percent a hundred percent for that specific company you know um yeah like I just tapped into a, a jewelry company that I have as a new client, which is really great and excited about because I love the work that they're doing. But all they really need, all she really needs is um, product placement, you know, and it's like, OK, cool. The product placement to the to the to the cool kids, to the creatives, to the artists, to that community and um, product placement and publications. It's like, yo, this is all you need because they're company is so great you know so it's um i think it's the same lane but it's also just a different service you know yeah no agreed i, I really uh without um uh, projecting what i think your business is how you could describe it um uh, i think you're a branding firm because product placement is as much branding as it is merchandising right yeah. like merchandising would be hey we have a warehouse or we have a, a storefront um and we want to put this merchandise placed in a certain you know yeah. portion of it and that's more just financials so but now how do i because when i hear that i can say if so if there's a company that <clears throat> they're you know let's say it's a t-shirt company right and they're like okay it's saying hey uh, we believe you have a pulse on the streets. You're one of the, you know, the creatives and the cool guys, blah, 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 whatever. And we want to tap into that because we're looking to identify our brand and what our brand is and those things. And it's, I would say I could give you some consulting on it or whatever, but I can't identify what your brand is, you know? No, exactly. Well, so, some people, you, you may be able to do a better job than that than, the actual yeah. owners of companies, right? Mm, uh, yeah. Because what what the owners of the company, um, what you you really think about some of the the greatest brands out there um, that have really got a chokehold on, on their market, right? Everybody from uh, Bob Knight over at Nike, right? uh -huh. putting some of the hottest sneakers in, in the streets, and hold on, what, go, go ahead. You need to check something? No, it was these cops back there, they were getting ready to taste some guy or something. It was just being no. No, 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 you're good. I want to make sure you, you don't get like ticketed or towed or something. That'd no, be no, okay, asked out in that first. But yeah. um, but so you have guys like Bob Knight who 
is honestly like I don't even know how old, but he's definitely not the guy who knows what the the fresh new gear is, right? Like so uh-huh. he can't identify what the brand direction necessarily is going to be. He just knows what results he wants, right? right? Um, so a lot of companies, whenever you think about a lot of these companies, whether it's IBM or John Hancock, or some of these century old companies that the founders are long and dead, they're just always a cycle of, well, we have a brand. We know what we can offer our clients. We have a service. All we're really good at is offering the service. Yeah. Um, what our brand should be is we're just going to tell you the result we want. You what? have to dictate to us if we have to, you know, every Black History Month, should we be really leading into that crowd? Yeah, and every, yeah, yeah. Look, tell us, yeah, Pride Month, okay, paint every building, you know, different colors or whatever. Uh-huh. Some companies lean into it a lot heavier than others. And that's not because the owner all of a sudden found out, you know, through a 23andMe test that they're one eighth Black. No, it's because there's a branding <laughs> strategy company that said, you know, you your desire is to increase revenue from this community by this much. So here's how we have to adjust your brand. So starting off, anytime you speak with a potential client, you don't necessarily need to know what their desired brand is. You need to understand what their result is what the result they want from your engagement is. Right. How right, you perfect. get them there is like, well, we can keep the same branding strategy you have. You might just have a placement problem of where you're putting your brand and affiliation. Right. You have a great brand idea. You actually just underestimated how much it costs to, to get you to that level right. or whatever the case is, right? Like, so there's, there's levels to the, the strategy. You might have a client that has a marketing department. They say, hey, look, we have internal videographers. We have um, coordinators. We we can put events together. We just don't know the strategy that would really resonate over this next one, two, three years for what the results we want, which is to have a more profound footprint in Arkansas. I don't know. We have a more profound footprint in Brooklyn. You're based in New York, which is a market that a lot of companies really want to get into or stay competitive in. So, you know, and for a lot of companies, it's very important to have people on the ground to let them know what's going on with the cool kids, so to speak. So um, there might be a, a oil company in Texas where I'm at that wants to establish a presence in New York, but not come off as the, you know, um, uh, the aggressive Texas oil company that's polluting the earth and whatever. Yeah. <clears throat> but so they're like, yo, how can we come up and come out as progressive? Our desire is to have an influence in Brooklyn as a progressive, socially aware, you know, energy company. Yeah. yeah. You can help them with that brand. What you need, what the challenge is for you is to standardize your product. All right. Thanks. So if you, and your pricing. Once you understand, all right, I am a at least this pillar, right? Because as an artist, you got you artists don't like to be confined in, in a box. You at like all. And boxes that's why, with no <laughs> at all. And that's why it's so difficult for me because it's like it's it's everything. It's like yo, why can't it just be everything in one? You know, like literally, yeah. you know. But then when you're articulating it or trying to describe it to someone. It's either going to sound all crazy scattered or they'll be like, oh, yeah, that sounds cool, but I can't grasp it. So I'm scared of it. Do you know? Man, you, you know what you need to be? Um, and a- anybody listening here, you need to be cereal. Right? Um, you need to look at how Kellogg's does their cereal in every grocery store. If you live in the United States, we all pretty much have we have different names of grocery stores. What's in New York isn't in Texas per se, right? Outside of yeah. the big ones, Walmart, whatever. But no matter where you're at, if you travel, when you go buy groceries, you're going to the same cereals right. every time. There, there's a whole aisle of cereal. 
Right. You don't care about you. You got maybe two or three. If you got more than four cereals that you alternate with, you might be an interesting personality. I want to get to know you. But for the most part, <laughs> everybody just has two or three cereals. And the reason is if they might not even be the best ones because people have a different two or three. Every cereal in that aisle gets bought. That's the only yeah. way they can stay in the aisle. They're getting bought by somebody. Right. Um, right. If, if you become like cereal, the reason is that people just know what they want. They sometimes are very weary of veering off. So there's companies that have come before you that have already established the benchmark of what branding is. And so, um, and the reason we typically gear towards one cereal or another is because we were established by this benchmark through our parents, through your upbringing, through whatever. You were just like, this is what you're going to eat. If you liked it, that's what you stayed with for the most part. Right. Companies over the years have been already told, this is how branding works. Right, you need to hire a branding and strategy agency, and they will tell you this. Understanding that, you can use that to your advantage by just going to a company and saying, Hey, for a company of your size, you need a branding and strategy company. Mm -hmm, what mm -hmm. they don't know <clears throat> is all the extra stuff. They're like, Okay, cool, I just want to buy what I know. And I don't have a problem buying what I know. I will pay you to try your company out. But when you start to get complicated, right? Like then you become like the entire grocery store, which yeah. too many products. So, and I think... never, I go to the grocery store once a week and I buy the same products and I'm like, okay, yeah. the other stuff is just cluttered to me. So do you think that it's a good lead to lead with, um, Dealing with uh, boutique boutique uh, companies, um, boutique companies, uh, brands or whatever that I'm leading with uh, awareness and volume. It's like, hey, you guys need you know a little bit more awareness and volume, and then within that there is you know the product placement, the promotional things, the event activations, the um, uh, collaborations, and all of those things are mixed in with building the awareness and volume. Yeah, that's that shouldn't that that shouldn't even come up until you're given a proposal, right? Like the collaborations, the, the those are the ends to the mean. Those are the details that me as a business owner, I don't care. You're going to talk to my marketing department about that. I, yeah. All I care about is the result and the money, right? Like exactly, I want this re exactly. result for this money. Um, instead of dealing with boutique clients, I actually probably wouldn't say solely focus on boutique isn't necessarily where i would focus on if a client is a boutique uh, client um that so be it i would probably focus more on niche than client let's yeah. say um for for example healthcare if you just decide i'm only working with healthcare clients stay saying is a branding and strategy firm for healthcare clients and you can even become more niche than that by saying Stay Sane is a branding and strategy firm for healthcare clients to be able uh, to get a sense and a, appeal to the minority community in New York. Mm -hmm. Right? Like just that niche, right? Somebody knows exactly what you're doing. If you, all you need is two sentences to describe your company. If you got to take more than two or three sentences to describe your company, you lost me already. Uh, right. then you're making me do work. I don't want to do work. Whatever right. I'm good at, that's the work that I do. That's why I'm going to write the check. I, I have properties that um, I obviously I, I manage, I own, and I, I have contractors and employees. Once I've given them my trust, right? There, there's only times that I really want to know the details of what they're doing. When they're fixing the kitchen, the bathroom, there's only time that I want to know the details, and that's if I don't trust what I'm hearing. So now I'm like, let me get the details, or I'm generally just interested. Yeah. But my reality is right now I'm interested in scaling my portfolio. So when I tell my team, hey, go ahead and rehab that kitchen, you guys know what the results I want. They just care about the results. You know, we already talked about the budget. Whether or not they're buying cabinets from Lowe's or, or Home Depot or whether or not you know, we're going light colored granite. Or I'm like, don't yeah. call me with that. We, that's, I don't yeah, yeah. care. 
Like they might be very proud of it because that's what they're focused on. I'm like, I'm already buying another property somewhere else. Like talk to your immediate supervisor, right? Like whatever. Yeah. yeah. So with you, don't put a barrier to me making a buying decision. And most people talk their way out of a sale. Right. All right. So find your niche client and companies actually gear towards professionals who service their niche because they feel like this guy knows what he's talking about for my particular need. For my, you, what I want, yeah. Yeah. i rather you say, I offer this service for, you know, if you're going to do boutique hotels, whatever, you can say, hey, look, I offer branding and strategy services for boutique hotels in New York. Here's client one, client two, client three. That's a lot easier of a sell and standardization process for you as well. Because the reality is you can do the a formula um, for client one, two, and three. If you don't have a formula, even though you offer a lot of stuff, I probably won't buy it. Right. Just because it's complicated to me. And people right. buy what they know. And if right. I don't understand it, I, I don't. I probably won't go out of my way to buy it. Right. Um, now, here's one thing. And this is, you know, we're coming up on a couple, 20 minutes here, but... Here's one thing that I really want people to understand is that most people think of when they start in a business, like, oh, I have a business or I have a, a firm or I have a creative agency. The reality is what you have is an organization. Mm -hmm. Re regardless of what that organization is, if it's a for-profit, it might be a business, if it's an agency, if it's, a, you know, whatever, it's an organization. And that's the most important thing in running any business. That is why some businesses can run at a deficit and still survive, even though they're not making money, is because they're organized. Then how they lose money? <laughs> like, at but, least we know we're losing money. In a L'Oreal, I believe, just filed for bankruptcy. Chapter um, Chapter Eleven bankruptcy. I think that's L'Oreal or um, another makeup company, a big one. Uh -huh. if it's not, and if it's not L'Oreal, I apologize. I'll put a correction. But so they filed for bankruptcy, but they're so organized in how they're losing money that people are still willing to work with them. And there are yeah. businesses that are making money, but they're like, yo, I offer this. I got this going on. Shoot, if you need your tire changed, I got you. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I uh, came in here for a t-shirt. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I came in for a t-shirt. You try to change my I time. came in for a t-shirt, but yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I, I gotta go. That, that's why yeah, yeah. I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna ask somebody to call you because they're not organized in the chaos, right? Now, what happens behind your agency doors, right? Like, boom, that that might be a little bit of a cluster mess. Still, we, you know, we, we work on standardizing on the, those yeah, things. Yeah, on the front page, it's it's organized, yeah. The front page, I just need, because and here's one thing that people kind of don't fully appreciate when they're selling to big companies. Uh, as an IT consultant, some of my largest clients have, have been Fortune 100, you know, Fortune 50 companies, you know, everybody from Starbucks, Google, IBM. I mean, we work with the government and all sectors. The people you're dealing with aren't the owners of the company. Yeah. That's somebody who's nine to five it is to buy your service. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's from you or your competitor. They just want to buy it before five o'clock so they can get home. They don't <laughs> want to have to think about it. That's not their job. Their job is, is I'm the marketing director and I just answer to the CEO uh, or I answer, well, not even that high up. A lot of times you're dealing with uh, a marketing uh, administrator, uh -huh. right? Like I'm, my job is to present options of cool, hip, fun to the, uh, to the team. Don't confuse me. Don't bring more work to me. Yeah. And it's yeah. not my money. I don't like people are always like, don't try to over impress me either. Just, so my biggest thing is I just don't want to look stupid for hiring you. That's right? it. Like, yeah, yeah, that's just literally that's what I was just thinking. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I, because at the end of the day, we're going to have internal meetings. And I've been on both sides. I, I'm the marketing director for our firm. We're going to have internal meetings. Hey, it's been nine months. Has this agency been good for us? 
no, well, they've been great here, blah, blah, blah. Here are the results we have. Great. All right, we're going to keep this direction. We're going to up the budget. We're going to decrease the budget. Cool. But as long as it's not a, who in the world brought these guys on? So to, to kind of sum up this conversation here, this portion of the conversation, what I wanted to do is, is focus on two huge action items for, for you. Um, and, and we're, we're going to be excited to follow up with what stays sane when everything stays sane. Brand, uh, the, the first action item is I, I need you, because this is specific to any marketing ambassadors and brands out there, branding agencies, because I really honed in that you're a branding company. How you create the aesthetic of the brand, whether that's through events, whether that's through um, employee engagement, whether that I don't, whatever, that's your specialty. But really what you're doing is cultivating a brand for companies. And ultimately, you might not really even fully appreciate that as much as the company is, but you could be also focused on cultivating there's such thing as internal branding, right? Like the mm -hmm. internal mm -hmm. dynamics of the company, yeah. but yeah. still it's the brand. They want to brag about it to yeah, um, the yeah. new hires, like, oh, we have a family culture here. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, we yeah. pay the marketing agency to make sure that we look family like. Um, but your number one challenge is we need to be able to go to Stay Sane on wherever. StaySane.cool, I think, is your website, right? Or, uh -huh. or is it StaySane. Uh, wherever you want us to find you. Um, and it needs to be apparently clear to everybody before I scroll anywhere that you're a branding and strategy company. Right. Like, I don't have to guess. I don't, if you have a dog, I don't want, unless your dog is part of your brand, I don't want to see him on there. If right, you have, right. like, you know, um, on your Instagram, on your social and, media. And, like and you say that, like, to your dog. So, like, yeah. So, with that, I should also clean up my, a website and take off like my pet projects whether yes. it's you know what i mean like all oh, these is my art things and my little my paintball stuff and like all these little cool things that i do they don't need to be there because they're pet projects so like take your pets off of there and be like yo this is what i do as a business thing blah 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 and you know i guess like get to know like down at the very last bottom of the page this little link you know what i mean like get to know the founder link can be on there and then in that it can be oh here goes some of my pet projects blah 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 but yeah like you said my beginning page organized this is the fuck's going on excuse my language this is what's going on this is uh this is what's going on this is where we can take you where do you want to go or whatever the case may be but it's it's kind of like a straightforward straightforward with, with the phone number that I can call, an email that I can, don't, if I have to, if, I might love paintball, but if that's not what I'm being paid to do, remember, I'm not doing this for myself. I'm working for a company that's paid me by the hour to buy your services. Don't make it right. hard for me. And right. don't, don't, don't let me get lost in, unless you have a purchase now, next to that paintball, like, section, that I can buy that product. Oh, paintballing for my company. That might be a product, but if that's not the product, then don't worry about it. Yeah. Right? Like there, if it's not something that I can purchase or will influence my purchasing decision. So I need State Sane to not only do that on the basis of your website, your Instagram. I'm saying Instagram, but you know what the social medias are better than I am. I do. Mm -hmm. if, if you, if whatever vehicles you're using for your branding, I, I need to be able to say, oh, if somebody needs some branding advice, I, I need to think oh, that's who I'm associating with. Same. Yeah, oh, I yeah, know yeah. guy. Same. Here's his phone number. He might not pick up because things are so busy, but he'll yeah, get yeah. back to you. Right. But if somebody talks to me about branding and you don't come to the top of mind, you're not doing a good enough job and enforcing to me that that's what you do. Right. Right. I, what I'm trying to establish on my brand as down that is if somebody is at being asked about real estate and business advice and they don't know the answer. They're like, you know, you should check out. Yeah. Ask them. Ask them. And he might answer. Yeah, yeah. If, if, if somebody that knows me isn't 
there yet. I'm not doing a good enough job in branding my services and right. what I'm doing. So branding is an evolu- evolving thing. So that's the number one thing. And the challenge to you and any other company or brand that's watching that is in the marketing game is that you can't sell me a service that I don't see you dominating. If I'm like, oh no, I mean, I I got a hundred thousand dollar budget, but I don't even see you doing it on your on your firm. Right. Then um, you're not for me personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the action item. I, I want everybody to to go on. Where where can we find you on the socials? Uh, stay sane. Stay sane everywhere. Stay sane. Okay. Everything. Stay sane. <laughs> All right, so everybody, S-T- go on stay Yeah, S-T-A-Y-S-A-I-N. And, and be honest with them on what y'all think of the branding. Like, you know, you take the gloves off. You don't got to go for the face, right? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't go for the face. But <laughs> let, let them know what what, what you like or, or what you would want to see. If you have a business, We this is what the Ask Dominat community is. We're trying to build on each other. Right. If you have a business and you have a branding question, ask them. Uh, right. And, and tell them what's worked for you, what hasn't. Maybe you guys can engage in that dialogue. But mm-hmm. it has to be abhorrently clear that that's what you do. The, the next action item goes back to the organization. Right. Like no matter what business you have, scale it back to organization. You're a cool guy. I know you. You're, you're an awesome guy. So I know for a fact that people like you, which is almost as as important as whatever business offering you you offer, right? Like the fact that people like you is is 50% of success. So here's one thing that I I know has happened to you, me, and 99% of the people that are watching this. You've left an event, you told somebody, all right, I'm I'm leaving, or, or you've departed from somebody in a way that they're like, all right, man, let me know if you ever need anything. Uh-huh. Let me know. Uh, we, oh, if you ever need anything, give me a call. The, the second action item is really reaching out to your circle, determining who your circle is, and just saying, hey, I'm going to need help in scaling um, my marketing agency. Uh, uh, I, I'm saying branding and strategy agency. Um, over the next two uh, weeks. Those are the first people that you need to be very, very clear about what you do. Don't come with, we do X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, right. too, right? Because if I'm going to invest my time for you, I need to know what the destination is, all right? So, and the more refined it is, my brain is going to be like, yo, Hussein needs me to contact right local grocery stores because he does branding for grocery stores right. in New right, York. Right. 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 He's, I wouldn't mention like what's in the back of your head. <laughs> like, you know, like just X, Y, Z. Um, and then what you have there is you're going to need their help for two weeks. And here's why two weeks. It'll make, it'll force you to be organized. Because if you, and most organizations, when employees quit, how much time do they got? Two weeks. Two weeks. I'm giving you a two-week notice. Is the industry standard. Anything above that, I'm just doing you yeah. a, a favor yeah. or a courtesy. Um, and, and two weeks means you got to train and get the next person up to speed to pick up where that person left off yeah. or you're losing money. And you're not losing money because they quit. You're losing money because you weren't organized. All right. So don't ask for more than two weeks. If they can give you more than two weeks, then great. Be thankful. You got somebody who's a real friend and uh, on your side. If they can't, don't cry about it because that's what the mm-hmm. world will give you on the night. Most people, some people just leave right. uh, you know, the night before and not tell you anything. And you better have everything organized for you to get somebody else. If they left on Monday, you're losing money every day that nobody's there making that. Mm-hmm, business mm-hmm. growth for you so the easiest way to do that is not have them think what do we do what services we offer here's one service one product one client type great what do i need you to do i already made a list of a hundred 
uh, of a hundred potential vendors. Can you just help me? Can you just schedule for me to go one on one meet them? Here are the questions that I think they might ask. Here are the standard answer. Uh huh. So once you have that, then it's your job right. to go close the deal. Right. The exercise for you in getting somebody to help with that is it's twofold. It's potentially getting clients out of it, but really it's making sure you're organized enough to start scaling right. your company. Because if you don't, if you're not organized with one employee, you're definitely not going to be organized right. with, with 10. If you're not organized with 10, by the time you're having 100 employees, you have so many companies that implode because their culture with 10 employees is the same as their culture with 100, but the cost of 100 is 10 times more. So wherever they were bleeding money and not organized, that, that's just 10 times with where they were before. So if you can do that um, over the next month or so, I think you're going to be in a great place to really start scaling the stay okay. same brand and, and it might it might change it, it, you might realize hey there's a better business direction that i could take right and that's okay that's called a pivot but it certainly shouldn't wobble right like it shouldn't be like all right this week i'm here next week i'm there um and, and it, that'll always feel like you're in a rat race right you're in a hamster wheel and not getting off um and i from a personal standpoint, even with the technology company that I that I have, we were always trying to just, uh, not always, but there was a time that we were trying to chase the next buck, the next dollar. And whatever technology issue somebody had is the technology issue that I was trying to fix. I started making a lot more money when I'm like, ah, I focus on one particular, we do application development and cybersecurity for small and mid-sized business. That's it. That, that, like, you want something outside of that? I'm sure we could do it. If you're in our client wheelhouse, we're able to, you know, upsell our services. But as far as getting clients, that's the base of how we acquire clients. Um, and, and that's really, for, for small uh, businesses, that's probably the best way to scale. That, that's the best way, uh, at least in my experience. And then from there, you, you're going to have to figure out what the best business decisions are maybe in a year from now or or even next six months. Some businesses go very fast and those decisions come up faster than not. But yeah, I, I hope that was clear for you and, and really anybody. That, that's and I look vote. forward to checking back in within the, you know, um, I, I would say all I need is that two weeks. You know, like, yeah, I know you're saying do that within, yeah. you know, in the month time span, it'd be a different page. But I definitely feel like it's a great direction. I appreciate it a whole bunch. So in the next two weeks, three weeks max, I would like to see that um, that month return, you know, on on my self work, on my self business. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And honestly, man, I will tell you, my text messages and phone. I, I I think I, I was like prom king or something because people would be, be jumping. If you you would be like, yo, that would, if you calling me to talk to me about the, a meme or, or uh, you know some some sports news, just know, family friends, I'm asking you for your help to grow my business. All right, and we can talk about that. All right, cool. Yeah, that was a great that was a great meme. Check this out though. All right, I need <laughs> <laughs> I need help with yeah. X Y Z. You, you got you got people in your circle there that you know we, we might be able to tap into, and if not, then hey, look, we we cannot figure out another strategy. I don't think that's your problem. There might be somebody that's listening to this that's like, yo, Dom, I don't have that. Um, I, we'd love to talk uh, on another one-on-one. -on -one. We asked Dom that, so reach out. But all right, saying, tell us where we. People can find you one more time, and um, we'll be wrapping well, it up. Uh, stay sane on everything, all platforms, uh, Instagram, your Twitter, your, your, your whatever, your, all, those, <laughs> all those platforms, and um, even chess.com. You know, you could drop me a message there and invite me to a game, either, either, whatever you want to do. Um, but... <laughs> I love that. Yeah, and we. It's, if you don't know, saying it's cold on the chest. Uh, so if if, uh, if your marketing and branding needs are covered, 
but you just want uh, a little bit of chess yeah. experience or see how, how good he is, check him out on, on yeah. chess.com. So, all right, guys, that's it for one-on-one -on -one with Ask Dom Nat this week. We got Hussein Wakil, stay sane, and I hope you guys have a great day. We'll see you on the other side of the internet, and hopefully he doesn't sue me, but yeah. stay uh, sane. Peace.